We welcome everybody here tonight at New Hope and those watching us by Facebook Live. We hope we'll speak something to your life to encourage you tonight. We started a series, uh, The Comeback. How I many know through a series of life uh, circumstances, situations, that sometimes you have to make a comeback? Yeah. We don't never know where life may carry us. It may be our own decisions, our own choices, or it may be something that we don't have the power uh, to uh, dictate, but life can take us in many directions, many times. We started out last week with the story of Joseph. If you're familiar with the story of Joseph, we learned that his life takes him on a roller coaster ride. He is the favorite of his father, of his uh, 11 brother, but it creates jealousy and hatred in his family, and he comes from an unfavorable beginning, but in the end, the Bible says God works all things Amen. for the good to them that love the Lord and call it according to his purpose. So right now, the condition of our life might not say so much of where God's taking us and God's destiny and God's plans and His purposes are for us. And so many times we focus on our history instead of our destiny, where they are going in life. We should be focusing, setting in our sights and aiming on our destiny that God has for us. How many know that God has something, uh, even though you've been through a hell and back? God sustained you. If he wouldn't have kept you, if he didn't have something for you, I believe God has deposited something great inside of all of us, and he wants us to deposit that in the earth. The Bible says we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the glory may be of him and not of us. So sometimes we're going to go through troubled waters in life, but you're going to get what God has called you to, uh, to get. It's interesting that in the Old Testament is character set into motion and deep and abide an understanding of a New Testament revelation. The Old Testament gives us types and shadows of the New Testament and the character of Joseph and the person of Joseph is a type of Jesus Christ. We have to understand that Life can be challenging sometimes, and we go through difficult circumstances and situations in our life, and sometimes we can't understand. But how many know God's got a plan? In our sermon series on Sunday, Journey to a New You, we discover in Jeremiah 29 11 that God has good thoughts over us and not evil. To prosper us are thoughts of peace to give us an expected end. So God didn't just put us here. Uh, by coincidence, uh, by chance, but all of us are here for a reason and a purpose. But life, sometimes, if you live long enough, you have to make a comeback. Has anybody ever made a comeback? There's characters all through the Bible that had failures, setbacks. There's a, there's a graphic cat, if you throw it up there, uh, talks about my setbacks, lead to my comebacks. I'll be better for it. Every setback is set up for a comeback. And God wants to bring you out better than you were before. Now you may be in a situation in life right now. You say, well, how can I be better than I was before? Whatever a life direction, whatever direction life takes us into, we've got to understand that God's got a plan. And God's got a reason. Even in a challenging times in our life, even through adversity in life, it can be the greatest times it teaches us. It can, the greatest growth in our Christian life can be through times of adversity and opposition. Yeah. If you've ever noticed, I was reading a documentary the other day on um, the birth of a baby giraffe. Has anybody ever seen a giraffe born? I know at one time, I believe, uh, there was a Facebook Live of, I don't know if it was a giraffe or whatever, but we can learn a lesson, a great lesson from this uh, 
thing of the birth of a giraffe. There was a man that was observing a giraffe being born, and he was uh, standing next to the animal keeper, and the mother giraffe was standing while giving birth. And the calf's hooves and head were already visible. And the man asked the zookeeper, when is she going to lay down? The zookeeper replied, she won't lay down. But that's a 10-foot drop to the ground. Is anyone going to catch the calf? Try catching if you want, Jack responded, but his mother has enough strength in her hind legs to kick your head off. So I don't think you want to be around a mother giraffe giving birth to her calf. All of a sudden, the calf is born and hurled forth and landed hard on its back, and the infant giraffe laid where it fell, almost motionless. No more than a minute passed, and then something totally shocked happened. Guess what that was? The mother kicks her baby. She booted her own little one hard enough to send its sprawling head over hooves. And the man said, why did she do that? The zookeeper says she wants to get it up. Somehow the newborn giraffe knew what his mother wanted and haltingly struggled to rise, but after a few feeble tries, it gave up, sinking back to the ground. Then all of a sudden, boom, a second hearty kick from the mother rolls the young one over several more times. What a way to come into the world, huh? And the calf tr tries again to prop itself up on its God-given stilts and finally manages an upright stance. And the man was marveled at what he was beholding, charmed by the sight of this fledging, fled fledgling giraffe, but then... Suddenly, unexpectedly, something happened that took his breath away. As soon as the calf gained stability in its upright perch, the mother kicked us off his feet again. This time, the zookeeper didn't want to wait for the question he said to explain. She wants it to remember how it got up. Come on, somebody. In the wild, if it didn't quickly follow the herd, predators would pick it off. There was a reason. It was a natural instinct for this mother to kick this calf and up in order for he kicked it twice, once to get it up, and the second time was to remind it how it got up. And we too have something in common with that baby a giraffe. How many has ever been kicked off your feet before? How many has ever been kicked while you was down? How many has ever been kicked by the very ones from whom I expected kindness? So in, in the story of Joseph, there, there are some lessons we can learn from here that will uh, teach us that even though life may kick you down, even though life may take you to some unexpected places, even, even though... Life can be full of pain and heartbreak and misery. That even though life kicks you down, you can make a comeback. So let me know if you live long enough tonight, you're going to have to come back from something. Yeah. I've learned through life, and I'm sure you through life experiences, that life will kick you in the teeth and knock you all the way down. Sometimes people are born in very unfavorable conditions. Sometimes you'll go through life and all of a sudden out of nowhere here comes this uh, wave of opposition and adversity. But getting up or staying down is a choice we all have to make. Getting stuck and not being able to move on to God's best is up to us a lot of times. Making a comeback is a season. Many times it's not quick. How many has ever had to recover from something that it took you longer than you expected? Sometimes making a comeback is not quick. It can take a long time. Joseph, from the time he was 17 to the time he was 30, he was on this uh, roller coaster ride of we call life, 
It took him in seasons of being down, seasons of being up, seasons of being back down, but finally raised him to a position of power second under the Pharaoh of Egypt. But God had a plan behind all this. Has anybody here ever been dealt a blow and had to recover from it? We all have. But sometimes we don't come back in just a few days. It takes time. We may go through a bad relationship. We may go through a sickness. We may go through a situation. We go through a problem that it takes longer than we thought that it would take to recover from. The Bible said there's a time, there's a purpose, there's a season for everything under heaven. But also in Ecclesiastes, the Bible says that God makes all things beautiful in his time. So if you may have went through a bad relationship, you didn't recover quickly. Joseph had 11 brothers. They were all his elder. But guess who was the favorite son? Joseph. Jacob loved Joseph because in his old age, he was the father of this youthful son. And Jacob loved him more than all, than them all and the Bible says he made him a coat of many colors to set him apart to show his favor on Joseph. If you'll throw that graphic up, Joseph outlined a uh, cat right quick. We're going to briefly talk about the story of Joseph. I know many people don't realize that the story of Joseph takes up a lot of chapters in the book of Genesis. And God's got something that he wants to speak to us through this story. But if you start researching and digging down in this story, you'll find out that Joseph was 17 years old when the story begins in Genesis 37. But it really didn't begin there. There's an underlying situation in this home. Joseph comes from a family of dysfunction. If you research the life of Jacob, you'll learn out that Jacob... His name means trickster or deceiver. And we learn on in the book of Genesis that God finally changes his name to Israel, which means a prince with God. But throughout his life, Jacob did a lot of deceiving things and a lot of trickery. But you know what? A lot of times what we sow, we reap. It all backfired on him, didn't it? He tried to earn his um, wife and he worked for her and labored for her for seven years and ended up the father switched her to her sister and he ended up marrying Leah instead of Rachel. And he wasn't expecting that. So the father said, guess what? You're going to have to work some more years for me to get her hand. So he ended up having two wives he ended up having uh, handmaidens. He ended up having all these children, half brothers, half sisters. He ended up having all these kids. And this family was just dysfunctional from top to bottom. So Joseph was born into this. But let me know it doesn't matter what you're born into a lot of times. It don't matter where you start, but it matters where you finish. So we shouldn't just look back at the history of our life and just dwell on our past and dwell on our mistakes and dwell on our problems. But God's got a destiny through our dysfunction, through our situation, through the circumstances in life. Jake, Jacob made his son Joseph a coat of many colors, signifying his favor. And his brother began to dislike him. They began to have a hatred for him. They, they, they begin to uh, have ill will towards him. Probably wasn't the wisest thing for Jacob to do to make his son a coat of many colors to distinguish him from his brother, but he did. And we go on to the story a little bit further. Jacob starts having dreams. And the dream is 
that his brethren and his whole family will bow down before him. Now, if you have brothers that's already having this ill will and dislike towards you, it's probably a good idea not to tell your brother these dreams that you, they're going to bow down before you one day. So, Jacob would send his brothers out to buy the sheep, buy the flocks, do, do different things. Then he'd say, Joseph, go check on your brother. Well, have you know, 11 young men going to get into mischief sometimes. And when they get out of the father's sight, they're not always going to obey him and do what he's told them to do. And these guys would go out. Sometimes they wouldn't do exactly what the father would tell them to do. And guess who went and told on them? Joseph. He would go tell on his brothers. And then one day when he went out to check on them, his father sent him out to check on them. He gathered them around and said, Guess what, guys? I had this dream where y'all are going to bow down before me and I'm going to rule over you. Well, this didn't hit well with his brothers. So his brother took him and they said, We're going to kill him. We're going to murder him. They hated him because of his dreams. They hated him because of what he was speaking. But just because some people can't see what God is doing in your life don't mean you don't know what God's doing in your life. Somebody shout amen. amen. So one of the brothers stood up and said, we shouldn't kill Joseph because the blood will be on our hands. Let's just strip him of his coat, throw him down in a pit, and leave him there to die. Maybe some wild animal will come and kill him, take him out or whatever. So they stripped him of his coat and threw him down in a pit. Then one of the other brothers said, no, nah, we shouldn't leave him here. It just so happened this, uh, these people were coming by and they decided they was going to sell Joseph to them people, sell him into slavery. So Joseph didn't have a favor with beginning. But just because you don't have a favorable beginning don't mean God can't work all things out for the good to them that love the Lord and call it according to His purpose. Somebody shout amen. amen. So life won't always go as we expected. Joseph had a dream. He was going to rule over his brother. His brother started hating him. Then the plot begins. The, the, the story begins. But in the background of this story... God is the author. Just like God writes a story about our life. He said, my thoughts of you are good and not evil. Thoughts of, to prosper you, to give and expect the end. God writes a beautiful story about our, about our life. And his goal is, his will is for that to be fulfilled while we're here on earth. He said, my thoughts of you are good. So Joseph's life didn't start out favorable. It started out in adversity. You and I may have went through some adversity and our life didn't start out favorable as, as we thought it would. Like I said, you may have went through a bad relationship. Somebody exited your life and it took you years to even imagine what life would be without that person. Has anybody ever been through that before? Everything going good in your life. And all of a sudden the company you worked 20 years and managed to get to the level of top paying benefits. I worked for Community Cash for 14 years. Worked my way up to uh, management. Was making a good salary. Was, had good benefits. All of a sudden they shut the whole company down. I just built a house. And we just had Jacob. 14 years seemed like I had been thrown down the drain. And of course, when that kind of thing happens, you know what's going to happen? You're going to start experiencing financial hardship. You're going to start getting behind on payments. All this kind of stuff can start happening. And you might just come back the next day or in a couple of days, but it's a long, painful process sometimes to come back. A long, painful season to come back. A lot of times we realize it's getting late in life. No matter what stage you're in, it could be too. It could be late, and you say, "Well, how can I possibly come back 
from all this. Maybe it's divorce. Maybe it's sickness. Maybe it's relationships. Maybe it's a job. Maybe it's some kind of adversity. Whatever it may be, you can say, well, how can I come back from all this that's happened to me? Joseph was thrown in a pit, sold into slavery, taken into Egypt. Now he's just 17 years old. And that's where, that's where the story really begins and unfolds of Joseph's life. It's a painful story. It's a process. Like I said, it's a, it's, a, it's a roller coaster. His life becomes a roller coaster of ups and downs and twists and turns. But we got to realize that God is in control of our life. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, He that begins a good work in you will perform it even into the end. But I know many people haven't lived long enough a lot of times to have to come back from a setback. Has anybody have ever come back from a setback? I say setbacks or set ups. Can you throw that one up there for cat? Switch me out just there for a second. Switch me back. Setbacks can be set ups. Every setback is a set up for a comeback. God wants to bring you out better than you were before. How many can believe that tonight? Yeah. I know every one of us here tonight, and many of, them watch, many of you watching by Facebook live stream, that you have experienced setbacks in life. If you live long enough, you're going to have, at first, you're going to go through a season of trials and tribulations and trouble. The Bible says, don't think it a strange thing. Concerning the fiery trial of your faith, as the matter of some think. Jesus said, in this life, you will have tribulation. You will have trouble. You will experience hardship. You will experience difficulty. You, you will experience all these things in this life. Job said, life is full of trouble as sparks that fly upward. Life can be hard. The schoolroom and the classroom of life can be difficult and it can be hard. Can anybody bear witness to that tonight? Amen. If you live long enough, I'm not trying to be negative tonight, but you're going to experience some adversities and it's really up to you if it makes you stronger or weaker, if it makes you bitter or better, if it makes you more wise or more foolish. But if you just keep living life, it's going to hand you something that you're going to have to come back from. Has anybody ever had to come back from something? I talked to a young man. I took my truck to be serviced. And while I was there, he had to transport me. Uh, Dad was having a medical procedure at St. Francis. And he had to transport me over to St. Francis Hospital. I went in at 11 a.m. They said that we're going to start working on your truck. I had to have a radio replaced. My radio, uh, the Bluetooth wouldn't connect to my phone. And a lot of times that comes in handy when you're driving down the road and on a business because you don't want to sit there and fool with your phone. Karen gets on me all the time. Leave that phone alone. So having a Bluetooth really comes in handy when you're on a business and you get calls constantly from different people and your family, whoever, and the Bluetooth can connect to your phone, and you can take the phone, uh, call over your speaker system, you, have, you don't have to touch anything. But anyway, long story short, I got there at 11 a.m., and they come into the waiting area, the lounge, and say, we're not going to be able to get to your truck at 1.30. I said, okay. Well, I said, one of y'all is going to take me to St. Francis because my dad's having a procedure. I need to be over with him. That's what my plans were anyway. So they <clears throat> didn't have anybody to take me. So I just happened, come on somebody, I just happened to go to a different lounge. And there was a young man at the vending machines. And I said, hey, you think you can find somebody to give me a ride over to St. Francis? He said, I'll do it. Let me just go out here and talk to the manager. So he went out there and spoke to the manager and they kind of, uh, Discussed it for a minute. Finally, he agreed to let this young man take me over to St. Francis. 
How many know there was a reason that he did? Yeah. I'm going to try to get him to come here and give his testimony. But there was a reason that I met this young man. Because I'm fixing to give you just a brief summary of what he told me. We got to talk, he introduced himself, and told me a little bit about his life and everything. Then he just began to open his heart to me. I didn't tell him I was a pastor. I didn't have time to because he, he was doing a lot of talking. He said, I was born in New York. Mother didn't want me. Didn't have a good home life. Been in and out of foster homes. He says at the age of 13, I was on the streets. He said, I lived a year on the street and didn't have anything but the clothes on my back. Just imagine, church, being 13 years old in the streets of New York. He said, somehow, him and his mother got back together and she decided to move down here to Greenville and... When she got down here, he wasn't happy. He said he just wasn't fitting in and didn't, he couldn't make friends and was having issues and having problems getting this stuff he shouldn't got into. He told his mother he wanted to go back. She said, no, we're not going back. So he said, I just walked out. He said, I walked over to my neighbor's house, told him what was going on, and told him what he'd been through in life. And the neighbor said, why don't you stay here tonight? He said, okay, I'll do that. When the night was over, his neighbors sat down and talked to him some more and said, why don't you just stay here for a while? He said, okay. And finally, they adopted this young man. Somebody shout amen to that. Now he's got a good home, got supportive parents that he calls mother and father. But he said, during the course of in and out of foster homes, he said, I was sexually abused, physically abused. He said he was put in one foster home. They lived on a big farm, big ranch. They had all kind of uh, uh, things, that chores they gave him every, every day on this ranch, on this farm. He said they had a big meat cooler where they hung their uh, deer and stuff they would go out and hunt. He said one day he forgot to do one chore. And by that, the foster parents took him and locked him in this big freezer for three hours. He said when that three hours was up, they finally come and got me out of the freezer and they were still fussing at me, his uh, foster mother. He said, he, he said, I apologize for not doing my chore. He said, then she took a knife and stabbed me. And somehow or another, DSS got called, or the foster care people, whoever you want to call them, and they took him in a basement, locked him up inside of a uh, dog kennel, and wouldn't let him out. So he, hear, hear, he heard upstairs people talking and stuff going on. He said somehow he struggled and got out of the kennel and went upstairs, and they found him bleeding from a stab wound. They took him out of there, and those... Foster parents got in prison. But anyway, he winded up living with these, this family next door. And one day, his, his new family said, we just want you to go to church sometime, maybe get involved in a youth group. He was an atheist. He didn't believe in God. Can't hardly blame him for not believing in God the way his life was unfolding. Such an unfavorable beginning. And he was really against it because he just wasn't fitting in. He wasn't making friends. And, they, and they, they said, well, just give it a try. They said, matter of fact, why don't you just test God? Just speak something to him. And he agreed that he would. So he, one day he was alone by himself. He said, well, if, there, if you're a God out there, if you're a God, do something in my life. Do something in my life. And it wasn't no time that God began to speak to him. He said one day he was by himself and somebody spoke to him. It was in an audible voice. It was so real and he turned around there wasn't nobody to be found. He went and told his uh, new family, 
I don't know what's going on. Maybe I'm losing my mind, but somebody spoke to me, and it was God. I know it was God. Well, guess what he did? He gave his heart to Jesus Christ. Amen. Then he joined a youth group. And ever so often, they'd have this big gathering of youth, and they'd let one give up, uh, get up and give their testimony. So one night, the youth leader got up. Him and the youth leader had formed a good relationship. So one night, the youth leader got up and said, Guess who is going to speak tonight? And he called this young man's name. He said, Whoa, how am I going to do this? He said there was a lot of stuttering and, and you know, pausing and all this kind of stuff. I didn't know how I was going to get up. He said, But I gave up giving my whole testimony. He said there was children and people coming down to the altar. But you never know the plan God has for your life. You never know how unfavorable it may begin. But how many know that God has a plan? Yes. God's got a purpose for your life. He had a purpose for this young man. Amen. And through all of this struggle in his life, it didn't make him bitter, but it made him better. And people say, well, I don't understand how you turned out to have such a good attitude and outlook on life and all that you've been through in life and all the circumstances you've been through in life. He said, God did it for me. The Lord came into my life. And now he goes around and gives his testimony. Like I said, I'm going to get him to come here. I got, I got his contact information and give his testimony. But I just sat there, you know, dumbfounded, just thinking, well, how can we complain? Come on now. How can we complain when somebody like that, that come from such a background and come through the things he did, physical, sexual abuse, all these things, being stabbed and, and, and going through foster care and foster homes and different things that he went through in life. And it did not, you know, he could have gotten bitter. It could have took him deeper and darker. Come on, somebody. In the places that we can't imagine. But God spoke to this young man and all, all of his brokenness and all his pain. He spoke to him and turned his life around. And if God can do that for him, he can do that for anybody. How many believe that tonight? Yeah. God's got a respect of person, so I don't care where life has took you. It may have took you down in the pit. You may have been betrayed. People may have walked out on your life. But how many know that's, that may be a setback? But praise God, it's just a setup. Yeah. God had this young man's life, even though uh, it was going everywhere on the map of life, God had a plan for this young man. And even though he might not have seen it back then, he says, I see where God was at now in my life. Yeah. So even though you may be in a point tonight that you'd say, I can't come back from what I've went through. I can't come back from this, this relationship or this sickness or these problems or financial uh, adversity, hardship, whatever. You can come back. Because yeah. I serve a God that can bring you back. And through the life of Joseph, we're going to be preaching. We started uh, two weeks ago talking about the process of Joseph's life over a 13-year uh, period of time. He was tossed into a pit. He was hated by his brother. His brother went back, had his coat of many colors, and he dipped it in animal blood and told uh, Jacob that Joseph was dead. Everybody thought he was dead. Everybody uh, just, you know, forgot about him, but said, Jacob... He hurt, and he mourned over Joseph. But all the time, Joseph was alive and well. But God was fixing down the road, was going to save this whole family through all of this opposition and adversity in Joseph's life. We'll learn about that just a little bit later. You may be in a situation right now. You may be in this. But say, this ain't me. This ain't me. Can you be in something what you in hasn't got in you? Somebody shout amen to that. You may be in something right now, but say it hadn't got into me. Jacob was in the condition of a pit, of a dungeon. People thought that he thought could trust, betrayed him, walked out on him, falsely accused. He was an outcast, but say, this is not me. Can you be in something, but what you in hasn't gotten you? 
A lot of people go through situations in life and it gets inside them. A lot of people say, well, I'm going through a storm. But a lot of times, the storm is inside the person. We can be our own worst enemy. Yeah. Say, I'm coming out of this. Don't judge me by my brokenness or my current condition. God is not finished with my story. How many, how many believe tonight He's not finished with your story? Yeah. People will count you out. People will discount you. People will say, well, where have they been? There's no way they're going to come back. There's no way they're going to come out of this. Have you ever heard anybody say that? Yeah. How in the world can, can anything good come of this? I said all things. Say all things. Romans 8, 28. All things work to the good for them that love the Lord and call according to His purpose. We've all been to places in life where we thought this cannot be, there's nothing good can come out of this. This is just something a lot of times that we're going to have to deal with. It's a time that we're going to have to walk through. But it is not what I am. Joseph was not a, 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 a person that was supposed to be cast down in the pit. He was not supposed to be taken and sold into slavery in Egypt. He was not supposed to be cast down in prison. He was not supposed to have been forgotten by the butler and the baker. Come on, somebody. Yeah. He was not supposed to... Uh, Stay down in the, that cold, dark dungeon. But the Bible said God was with him and he had the favor of God on his life. And wherever he went, it was Potiphar's house, he prospered. In the prison, he's prospered. You know what? It don't matter how low life takes you. If God is with you, you are coming back up. You are coming back and you're going to be better than you were before. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Let me try to finish this up. They sold Joseph to this foreign people and now he's with the wrong people. But you know what? Joseph, down inside, he knows there's something great inside of him. He knows God has deposited something inside of him and he's saying, don't get used to me because I ain't going to be here alone. So it wasn't coincident. It, 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 it was God's... Um, hand, God's providence that took Joseph out of the pit, sold him to this foreign people, taken into Egypt. You say, well, how, how can God turn this around? Church, God can turn anything around. God is greater than your past. God can give you a new beginning. God can turn your life around. You haven't sunk too low. The Bible says... Uh, Gloat not over me, my enemies. Though I've fallen, I will rise again. People don't like you talking about pain. People don't like you talking about being down. People don't like you talking about the pits of life. People don't they like you talking about those kind of things. They want, they want you to talk about breakthrough. They want you to talk about the good things. But you know what? I learned a lot of lessons through the most difficult situations in my life. Lessons I wouldn't trade for nothing. That forged me and molded me and made me and who I am and who you are today. Don't stop where you at because God's got better days for you ahead. How many believe that tonight? Yeah. I said He's got better days ahead for you. Yeah. Don't get used to seeing me in the pit. Sold by my brother. Sitting in prison. God has His hand on my life and I'm going to make a comeback. Say, I'm going to make a comeback. This is just a temporary setback, but I'm going to come out better. Say, I'm going to come out better. So whatever situation you may be facing tonight, it may be the one of the most difficult things that you've ever faced. How can I possibly make a comeback? The Bible says, don't trust in your own self, but trust in the Lord. Acknowledge Him in all thy ways and He'll direct your path. Lean not to thy own understanding, but trust, put all your trust in the ways of the Lord. 
Acknowledge Him in all your ways, and He will direct your path. How many believe tonight that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord? Amen. The psalmist David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for Thou art with me. No matter what path you go down, God is with you, and God's going to bring you out. So as we stand up tonight and close, and you may be walking through a difficult season, you may be walking through some adversity. Throw that uh, graphic up one more moment about Joseph. Joseph's 17 years from when the story begins. He's 30 years old when he stood before the Pharaoh. 13 years expires in his life before he reaches the place God intended him to go. 13 years of hardship. 13 years of he was in the pit. 13 years his life took him uh, uh, to the prison. 13 years he was falsely accused. 13 years of a roller coaster. Up and down, up and down. But finally he comes to the place of prominence. Finally God elevates him. Finally God brings him as the prime minister of Egypt, second in rule only under the Pharaoh. How can he end up in this place after such an unfavorable beginning? How can this young man that I talked about uh, in and out of foster care, uh, now he's through this season in his life and God's using him. It's because you can come back from every setback. You can come back from every problem, every adversity, every opposition. You can come back tonight. Don't never count yourself out. Somebody shout amen. amen. Don't never think that you can. I don't know about you, but I've been through hell in life, and you have too on earth. And you found out if you trust in the Lord, it's not by might, not by strength, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. No weapon formed against me can prosper. He works all things out to the good to them that love the Lord. If God be for you, who in the world can be against you? When God's got a purpose and a plan for you, I don't care what people say about you. I don't care what people think about you. I don't care where life has plunged you to. If God has His hand on you, ain't nobody going to stop you from God getting you to where He wants to take you but yourself. Right. You're the only one that can do it. So just because life has you down tonight, you're not down for the count. The Bible says, though a righteous man falls seven times a day, he shall not be utterly destroyed. There's going to be times that you're going to be down. Emotionally, physically, mentally, there's going to be times when life has you down. But that means he's got a little fight in him tonight. The Bible says that that same spirit raised Christ from the dead, dwell in you, it will quicken you, it will make you alive. How many glad that the spirit's inside of you tonight? And even, even that you might be going through the toughest seasons of your life. It's just a season. One event in your life don't define you. One season of your life don't define you. It's remarkable. I was reading some uh, uh, little excerpts of people that made comebacks in life. From, from presidents to, to, to famous people all around the world that had to make comebacks. That were looked over. That, that, that was at the bottom, didn't have anything going right for him. All of a sudden, God opened up a door. How many believe that God can open doors no man can shut, shut doors no man can open? How many believe God can make a way because he's the way maker? He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. How many God can provide for you when you live in the wilderness lifestyle? He'll, he'll send a manna from heaven and rain quail from heaven and rain rock from the, uh, wa uh, water from a rock. God will provide you when you're in the wilderness, when you're in the toughest season of your life. God will take care of you. Amen. So let's pray tonight. Heavenly Father, no matter what we're going through, no matter what season of life we're in tonight, no matter what struggle we're in life tonight, you're the God of, of a turnaround. You're a God that can take our, our, our uh, mistakes and turn them into miracles. You can take our mess and turn them into miracles. You, you, can, you can take... Uh, the most unlikely person, the unlikely, most unlikely candidate. You take the foolish things of the world, you found the wise, and the weak thing, the base, the mighty. You use people that's unusable. 
You, you, you put your hand on somebody that nobody expected them to rise to prominent in a place of position. Nobody ever thought that they would be successful in life. You can take that person on the potter's wheel and you can mold them and shape them and make a beautiful vessel out of their life. Yes. You can take what seems a hopeless situation and turn it around and give us hope again. You can take us from the bottom to the top. You can take us from the background to the forefront of life. If we'll trust in you. It's a process. Whatever you're going through tonight, it may be a painful season. It may be a painful time in your life. Weeping endureth for the night, but joy is coming in the morning. I said weeping endureth for the night, but joy is coming in the morning. This is not going to last. This is temporal. This is passing. Trust in God. Through it all. Through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all. I've learned to depend on God's Word. I know every promise in this Word is yea and amen in Christ Jesus the Lord. He that spared not his own son, but freely delivered up him before us all. How shall not he with him freely give you all things? I'm telling you tonight, if you'll trust in Jesus, if you'll put your trust in him, you may have been down to a point in life where you thought you would never get out of it. Come on, somebody. You may have been somewhere in life you never thought you would escape. You thought this was going to take you down. This was the end. But how many know God stepped into your circumstance and your situation and He laid His hands on you and He gently as the shepherd does, He stood with you and led you out. Yes. And now you can just say, Lord, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I would have left the land of the living. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Whom he had redeemed out of the hand of the enemy. How many glad God brought you out? Amen. I said, how many glad God brought you out? Yes. If it hadn't been for the Lord, I wouldn't be here tonight. All of us can say that. Amen. Through all my bad decisions, my bad choices, I wouldn't be here tonight if it wasn't for God's grace and His mercy. His mercy is new with every morning. He said, come boldly to the throne of grace. Come bold that you may obtain help, mercy, grace, and time of need. I mean, know that God's a graceful God. Yeah. He's a merciful God. Just because life's down on you and people's down on you, God's not down on you. God's love is unconditional. God will love you when you're good. He'll love you when you're bad. That's not going to stop Him from loving you. You may... You may Reap the repercussions of bad decisions. But God loves you enough. And though you're temporarily in, in a bad spot in life, a bad condition in life, God loves you enough to bring you out of it. David said he reached down in the maury clay into the pit and lifted me up, put my feet on the rock and established my goals. Yes. You serve a God tonight that will reach down for you. You can't get to Him, but He can get to you. And He will pick you up. He'll pick you back up tonight. Amen. David said, I will look into the hills from whence cometh my help, for my help cometh from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. He said, the Lord is my present help in time of trouble. He said, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. I don't know who I'm speaking to tonight. But I want you to know you're coming out and you're coming through. Yeah. And though you've been in this fiery furnace like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, your clothing is not even going to smell like smoke and not one flame will be able to kindle upon you for your God in heaven has you engraved in the palms of His hand. You are the apple of your His eye. You have been no longer termed desolate, but Beulah. He is married to you, and He loves you with an everlasting love. He has drawn you. And don't count yourself out tonight, but trust in the Lord that He will turn your life around. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for Your Word. 
Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your anointing in this house tonight. Bless your people as we leave here tonight. Bring us back safely again into your house. We just pray, God, that those listening in, that you have changed somebody's life tonight. You may not know Christ. You may have turned your back on Him. But He's as close as a whisper of His name. All you got to do is say, Jesus, help me. That's enough. It don't have to be some long, religious, pious prayer. As long as it's from the heart, God will hear your prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good to see you tonight. Come back Sunday. Got some good word we've been bringing on Sunday mornings, Journey to a New You. And I know God's got a great service in store for us. We look forward to seeing you once again Sunday morning. And don't forget Thursday night. We've moved Wednesday night service to Thursday night. God bless.